Welcome to Ramsaholic episode two. I'm your host, Shay. You can find me on Twitter at Shay Tweeted at. You can find the team and all of our other content over at Toilets to Titles on Twitter. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit those post notifications. Today, we're going to go over the LA Rams 2023 schedule. I would give my opinion on each game and at the end, see what I have the Rams record being. You can find all of our content, including articles, mock drafts, player rankings, and episodes at toiletstotitles.com. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Check out our sister network for all of your college football needs, the CFB Nation YouTube channel. Throw us an Apple Podcasts iTunes review. And lastly, if you'd like to interact with the team, discuss NFL, fantasy football, or college football, or if you'd like to get into our weekly mock drafts, reach out to me or Coach, Coach Sheps, on Twitter to get into our gilded chat. Cue the intro. Swap a first door and I can play ball in real life. So when they make it fun, it never work. They think they offended me. Nah, I'm dodging that energy. I know who my friends are now. You currently dead to me. This shit gon' last a century. Uh-huh. And every time they mention uh-huh. me, increase my life expectancy. Uh-huh. Maybe this my destiny. Loved and hated. Then hated and loved. Never betrayed to be a thug. But know a couple who hold slugs. Whoa. Ain't fighting Spider-Man, but everything I'm spitting venom. <laughs> Had to look in the mirror and get my shit together. Cause sometimes you think it's over, but it's only getting better. Yeah, good friends going with the wind, like Pac said. Yeah. Legends never die, so we not dead. I'm a fresh white boy, you can call me your pothead. If you say I ain't got bread, hate my life. Ramily, Ramily, Ramily. I am super excited. Um, seeing this schedule come out, you know, we knew who the Rams were playing, but it's great when you see who you're playing in week one and when you're playing your rivals, what weeks. We you playing the last week of the season, wins your bye week, especially if you're going to any games, traveling, it, it's crucial. I mean, the schedule release has turned into like a high-level draft hype deal. I mean, the NFL is just growing with fantasy football and all the podcasts. Um, you know, it's great to see. And let's get right into it. We're going to throw up the Rams schedule. All right, so I'm not going to go over preseason. I mean, if you want me to, just hop in the comments. But I doubt anybody's going to really care about preseason games. That's just, you know. I mean, I will say one thing that for the Rams it will be cool because we did have so many draft picks this year and – I'm sure they're going to get a lot of reps in preseason, but as far as the end result, wins, losses, doesn't really matter. So week one, the Rams go to Seattle to take on the Seattle Seahawks, a team that beat us twice last year. And I will definitely say both games were super close. First game we lost on a game winning drive by Geno Smith on a touchdown to DK Metcalf. Uh, The second game was horrible. Lions fans got screwed out of a playoff spot. There was a lot of missed calls. Even the officials admitted to it um, after the game, which is always horrible. Uh, Yeah, the Rams got robbed. So it's a rivalry, and it's a rivalry that Sean McVay has actually done very well in. He beats beat Carroll a lot. So... I'm chalking this up as a dub. Boom. Week two, our home opener is against the San Francisco 49ers, our heated rivalry, a team that I personally can't stand. Um, Yeah, you know, it's to me, I'm happy we're going to play them week two. Both teams should be healthy. Fresh, ready to go. For San Francisco, I'm not sure who's going to be their starting quarterback, to be honest with you. I think Brock Purdy is probably going to miss a lot of time this season, or he probably would be the starter. So it's either Trey Lance or Sam Darnold. Um, I think Trey Lance will be the starter, and that does not worry me personally. What worries me is the San Francisco 49ers defensive line. They've had our numbers 
in the regular season. We know what happened in the playoffs. We don't need to get into that. But in the regular season, they have beat us, what, seven, eight times in a row. So we got to we gotta get this one. Um, <clears throat> but I don't think we win this game. Our offensive line is definitely improved, but San Francisco's defensive line seems to always give us issues. And just in general, give us issues overall. We can keep this one close. I don't see them blowing us out. But I do see them beating us in a 23-20 game. Someone put a loss there. That kind of hurts. Uh, this one's tough. Um, the Super Bowl rematch from two years ago, now you could say. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams traveled to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Uh, our first primetime game of the season, Monday Night Football. This one's going to be tough. So not only do we not have the same roster that we had from that Super Bowl, but the Bengals are definitely improved. Joe Burrow is now a household name. He made a nice run that Super Bowl year, but now he's considered a top three, four, or five quarterback in the league. Um, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. Joe Mixon, if he's there, it's it's a team that worked on that offensive line. It's going to be tough for us to win this game traveling to Cincinnati. I know they're going to have revenge on their mind. So, unfortunately, we're going to start the season one and two. That's going to be a loss for us. Then we get a little bit of a game that, I'm not going to say is easy, but we're taking on a rookie quarterback in Anthony Richardson when we travel to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. This will be a 1 o'clock game. Colts, I do think, go 9-8. and eight. I'm not going to say they're a horrible team, but I think we match up well against them. They have a young quarterback, so hopefully he can make some mistakes. Maybe throw an interception, possibly fumble if Aaron Donald could get through. And I see our offense being able to move the ball against this defense. It's going to be probably a 27-20 game I can see. And we pull this one out with a dub to go 2-2. Two and two. Week 5, a very tough game. Um, but at least we're at home and we host the defending NFC champions, the Philadelphia Eagles. The Eagles definitely had a good draft on paper. We'll have to see how these rookies uh, pan out on the defensive line. It's going to be super hard to contain uh, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Godart. They have DeAndre Swift now. Um it's going to be super hard with their offensive line to get pressure. Our secondary is very young. I think this one can be one of those games that we lose by double digits and it gets out of hand early. So I'm chalking this up as a loss to go to two and three. Then we go and host the Arizona Cardinals. So the good thing is here we're, we're staying home and we're playing a team who's probably not going to have Kyler Murray in this game. Um, so we should definitely win. We we always beat the Cardinals. We should easily beat them now with all the injuries they have. No Kyler Murray, no – can't say no DeAndre Hopkins, but it's looking like he's going to not be a Cardinal. Uh, young defense. This looks like a team that's probably going to have the first, second pick in the draft next year. So I for sure see the Rams winning this one to move to three and three. Then we're at home again against the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is huge. If we travel to Pittsburgh, that would definitely be a lot harder playing at Heinz Field. Being home. Kenny Pickett's their quarterback. 
They took Allen Robinson from us in a trade. I wouldn't say they took him. They kind of blessed us. He was really not working out in Los Angeles, and I thought he would. Um, <clears throat> Pittsburgh has an amazing defense, a offensive line that's very bad. So I can see this game being very low scoring, 17-13, 17-14. But the good guys pull it out and get the win at home to move to four and three. Then week eight, we travel to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. This one's tough, man. Cowboys are talked about as an NFC favorite, although come playoff time, they usually don't show up, mainly Dak Prescott, but they have an amazing defense led by Mika Parsons. Offensive line's good. Uh, Tony Pollard's taking now the lead role in the backfield, which is explosive, as we've seen last year, what he did to us. C.D. Lamb, you know, this team's just well-built and they match up very good against us. So I honestly see us losing this game to Dallas Cowboys. Then we travel, as always, to Lambeau Field to take on the Green Bay Packers. This has been a team that we have struggled against, but mainly due to Aaron Rodgers, I feel. He's given us trouble. Um he knows what to do, what audibles to call to really get us off balance. And with Jordan Love at the helm, I'm not really worried about this one. I think the Rams could actually win this game. And I'm definitely going to chalk this one up as a W. And at least, I will say, at least it's early November. I know the Rams try to get this game, one of their first games of the season, just to get away from the cold weather, but Lambeau usually gets cold around late December. So be in early November. Hopefully we luck out. Maybe it'll be 40s, 50, 40s or 50 degrees. So that'd be great. Week 10, we have our bye week. And since we have a bye week, let's, uh, let's do some housekeeping. You can all find our content, including articles, mock drafts, at toiletstotitles.com. And if you're interested, we would greatly appreciate it if you joined our Patreon, patreon.com backslash toiletstotitles. We have a few levels here, five that I'm going to talk to you about. We have a base level at $3. You get in-season waiver wire episodes. The second level is $5 a month. You get guaranteed invite into Frankenstein League at $7.50 a month, you get one-on-one -on -one draft advice, DFS advice. At $10 a month, you get free entry into Frankenstein, which is a $25 value. At $20 a month, you get one-on-one -on -one roster analysis, 30-minute episode, breaking down your league's draft. That's definitely a great value. So, Ramily, Title Tribe, please, please join the Patreon. We greatly appreciate it. And let's get back into it. So week 11, we host the Seattle Seahawks, a team that we played week one. Uh, it's hard to sweep a division opponent. I mean, we've done it, of course, but and it happened to us last year by them. But in Seattle, I think Seattle will probably be fighting for a playoff spot, wild card, so... We will as well, but I think they probably take this one. I'm not going to say they're going to blow us out, but Geno Smith and company probably start gelling around midseason with JSN at wide receiver, Charbonnet at running back with Kenneth Walker, so that's a great one-two punch. They'll probably have it all figured out at this time of what they're doing in the backfield. We'll catch them off guard week one, but I think week 11 we lose another close game. Probably a three-point game as well as the first. So I'm going to put this as a loss, bringing us to five and five. Week 12, we host the Arizona Cardinals. No, we go, we go to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. So this will be the second time facing them. Um, I know I just talked about it's hard to sweep an opponent, but Arizona is a team we usually do sweep. And... 
I think that's going to continue here. Now, Kyler Murray probably does come back this game, so that makes it a little more harder, but we do tend to play Kyler Murray very well. We know how to contain the edge on him. And as of now, you know, assuming both teams are where they're supposed to be at that time health-wise, I see us winning again. Um, I think we really have to take advantage of games versus teams like the Arizona Cardinals because, as I mentioned, they're probably going to be the first or second pick next year, and I do see them taking Caleb Williams or Drake May and trying to move Kyler Murray. So let's chalk this up as a W at 6-5. and five. Then we host the Cleveland Browns Week 13. Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb. They just got Zadarius Smith in a trade. Uh, this team's on paper looking pretty good. But it's not to me not a team that's really dominant. Not a team that you look at and you're like, oh, this team's going to beat us. Let's just chalk this up as a w, uh, loss and move on to the next week. So the Rams will really have to bring it. This game, Cooper Cobb, Van Jefferson, Paco, you know, the boys really got to bring it. Cam Akers. So I see us winning this one. I don't see Cleveland as a, a team that could dominate us. And I don't really see us blowing out a lot of teams, maybe the Cardinals this year, but with all the, the moves we made, we're going to be in some dog fights. All right, then the Rams week 14 travel to Baltimore, uh, December 10th. This one's tough, man. They got our boy Odell Beckham, Zay Flowers, Rashard Bateman, who I think is going to be a big-time sleeper this year, Mark Andrews. They got Lamar Jackson back. Like This team is stacked, even on defense led by Roquan Smith. This is a team that's talked about as an AFC favorite right now. Them and the Bengals will be competing for that division. Um, last time we played the Ravens in Hollywood, we know what Lamar did. He went Hollywood Jackson on us. We got blown out. That was Jalen Ramsey's first season with us. And that was tough. Um, and this one might not be that close either, you know. I don't know if we have the firepower to keep up with the Ravens, and I don't know if we have the personnel to really stop someone like Lamar Jackson. So I'm going to chalk this up as a loss. Then we go back home to take on the Washington Commanders. Um, this one doesn't scare me, to be honest. Um, I think we're better than Washington. Sam Howell will be their quarterback. We really don't know what to expect from him. They have Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson at running back. Scary Terry's their, their lead receiver. Now the receivers could be a problem for us, but I think we can get pressure on them. The offensive line isn't that great. I think we could score on them as well. I think Cooper Cup could really expose this secondary. And we're at home, so I think we could we could really – put some speed on them in SoFi. So I'm going to put this as a W. Then we have a Thursday night game. So this is a short week, and we're going to be taking on the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Derek Carr is the quarterback now. Ah, but it's the Saints, man. It's not like a team that really – like, I think they're in the same ballpark as us, a team that's not going to be contending but can pull together some wins to make a playoff run. I think Carr can really make some mistakes in this one. It is a short week for us, but we are staying in L.A. It's not like we're traveling. So I'm going to have to give us a W on this one. Hopefully we contain Alvin Kamara, Mike Thomas, but Dennis Allen at coach, I think – if they struggle, he's probably the number one coach on the hot seat. And 
Sean McVay is going to out-coach him in this one if he's there. So let's take that as a W. Then we get a nice little 10-day break, which is huge. Um, it's a little bit of a bye week, you know, to go to MetLife to take on the New York Giants, led by Danny Dimes, high at wide receiver, the rookie from Tennessee, Darren Waller. They added him in the offseason. Big signings there. Defense is loaded. Dexter Lawrence, Leonard Williams. They took Ashawn Robinson from us. Uh, good young secondary. They drafted some good cornerbacks this draft. This one's going to be tough, man. This one's going to be a dogfight. And I do have us winning, but that's with the hopes that we can have Daniel Jones struggle. I hope by this time of the year our defensive line, our young guys are really getting at it. And, um, you know, we're catching a rhythm, staying healthy. Our offensive line is going to be improving week to week. Very young, but come week 17, you expect to see your young guys really showing some something, some promise. So given the 10, day, 10 days off, I think we can go into New York. Last time we went to New York, we beat them pretty easily. I think we could do it again. I'm putting the Rams with the W on this one. And then the last game of the year, we go to Levi Stadium to take on the San Francisco 49ers again. So we see them pretty much second game of the season, so early on, and then we finish with them. And I really feel like the odds makers might feel like the Rams and 49ers could be contending for the division in this game, but I think it'll be more so us needing this win, maybe to get a higher seed. But I have us at 10 and 6 at this point. I think San Francisco will probably be playing for the one seed at this point with Philadelphia. So it'll be tough. I want uh, I want to be so wrong on, you know, one of these games against San Fran because I do have us losing this one as well. You know, when I put that to this together, we came up with 10 and 7. I feel like the 10 wins I gave the Rams in their current state are very realistic. Like Seattle, Arizona twice, the Colts, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, New Orleans, Washington, the Giants, Green Bay without Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams isn't there, he hasn't been there. You know, and then my losses are against top teams like San Francisco, Philadelphia, Dallas, Cincinnati, Baltimore. Like those are five teams that you hear in the Super Bowl talk. Those are the contending, Super Bowl contending teams. So, yeah, unfortunately, I got us taking a loss here, bringing our record to 10 and 7. Um, a lot of Rams fans feel that this is going to be a five or less win team. I highly doubt that injuries played a, such a huge role. We set an NFL record for injuries to the offensive line last year. Every week we were putting in new bodies, new bodies, guys off the street, 38 year olds. It was just getting ugly. Stafford was getting no time. Stafford was hurt. Wasn't even throwing in OTAs. Um, He's throwing now, and he's looking sharp. We're definitely going to need some of these young guys to step up, but they can. you, you got to remember, these guys won a Super Bowl two years ago. Um, Cooper Cup, Stafford, and Donald, that's a strong core, super strong core. Those are leaders. Those are guys that young guys are going to look at and say, you know, they don't want to lose. They want to win. They're not coming here to lose. These guys don't want to tank for Caleb Williams, for Drake May, for Marvin Harrison Jr. No, we don't want to do that. That's not going to happen. I know a lot of people are doubting the Rams, and I like it. We only have two primetime games. Let us fly under the radar because every time we do it, great things happen. Sean McVay took over a 4-12 team, led him to the playoffs his first season. Sean McVay is coming back not to lose. Sean McVay is going to contend. Last year was a slap in the face. We were supposed to go back to back. We all were overhyped. Injuries hit us super bad. 
And even if they didn't, I don't know if we would have made the Super Bowl. I think we definitely would have made the playoffs. I think we would have got in there. Um, so at 10 and 7, we're in the playoffs. We're going to be a wild card team next year. And then I can, you know, on the episode that week, when that time comes, see who we're facing, see how I feel. I'll be super confident. I'll tell you that. If the Rams make the playoffs, I'm going to feel like on cloud nine just because all the doubters. And unfortunately, a lot of it is in our fan base. Um, it's crazy to think we went from winning a Super Bowl to two years later, fans wanting to tank. Ramily, come on, man. Stafford doesn't want to tank. Cooper Cup doesn't want to tank. We're not trading those guys. Those guys are staying in the horns. So, yeah, feel free to comment. Give me your input on what you think the Rams record is going to be. I'm always open to DMs, conversations with Ramley. I love talking with the Rams fans, and our fan base is awesome, man. So I'm going to leave off on that. Thank you for tuning in. As always, make sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and turn on the post notifications. We really appreciate the love, Ramley, and Title Tribe. As always, take care of yourself and your loved ones. I'm Shay, at Shay tweeted that on Twitter. <laughs> and I'm out. It's 4 a.m. in New Bedford. I'm getting my shit together. City just ain't safe. These kids down for whatever. Letting the lead fly. They flocking just like a feather. I couldn't stay there forever. Career not getting better. I ain't no rapper. Can't imagine not getting cheddar. They posting pics in their base models. Not even leather. Not even leather. It's 4 a.m. White. Wait. The city just ain't safe. I'm still here. Nothing changed.